Hey y'all, greetings from New Orleans. This is my review for The Real Housewives of Miami, episodes three and four. So this episode continues at Alexia's wedding party. Everything's going well, uh, no bad luck. The boat is still intact. I don't think she's cursed anymore. Meanwhile, we're with Lisa and she is pissed. She's surrounded by most of the cast and she's letting them know how angry she is at Larsa. So then Larsa walks by, she's like, yes, we're talking about you. So Larsa sits down, they're going back and forth. Lisa's literally yelling at her and she's like, shut your mouth about my effing family in front of like guests and the other ladies they're mortified they try to step in and just try to break it up they want this day to go smooth for alexia they don't want any drama a little later on they're all out on the deck seated together and it looks like lisa has calmed down a bit she sees larsa again she tells her she needs to walk the plank so they bicker a little bit before apologizing to each other but hopefully this is the last time we'll hear that argument Following that, the party continues, everyone's having a good time, and it looks like it was a success. Next scene after we get a montage of what a few of the ladies are doing, we're with Julia, and she's meeting up with a group of people that's representing a modeling agency. Looks like she's trying to get back into it. She met these group of people through Kiki, so Kiki is a working model, and did y'all know Kiki is a mom too? Like, I want them to bump her up to full time because I want to know a little bit more about Kiki. I know she has so much to her than just being the fun girl. Julia's purpose for this is basically trying to find something to do now that she's like an empty nester. Like she has no one to take care of but her animals and it seems like she's alone a lot. Now she says she has modeling experience. I'll give her that. I could see her being like a print model, maybe. Next scene we're with Alexia and Marisol, and they're just kikiing at her shop. I swear, Marisol is synonymous with alcohol. So we're talking about Alexia's wedding party that just passed, and we find out that her son, the one who got charged with domestic violence a while back, like the girl he brought was the one that charged him with that. So they're still together. I mean, it sucks that in most cases, like the girl always comes back. But anyway, of course Alexia takes her son's side. Like, according to her, what happened was the girl was being drunk and she wanted to drive home or something like that. And, you know, her angel son was trying to stop her. And then, you know, I'm guessing a fight broke out between them. She does say that she's not pleased that they're still together. Now, I get that Alexia, you know, she's just trying to defend her son. But, you know, sometimes I just be thinking Alexia's just a little, problematic like we've seen that her son has a pattern of violent behavior like this isn't his first time like putting his hands on somebody i mean i remember the time that he was charged for beating up a homeless man anyway marisol says that he's just pussy whipped so next scene we're with Larson, her badass dogs, and she's meeting up with the dog trainer. I swear every time I see Larson's scenes, I feel like I'm watching an off-brand version of the Kardashians. This is from the way she talks, from the way she carries herself, from the way like everything is a business or some type of influencer relationship where she's trying to get people to buy stuff from her. But yeah, this scene was definitely a best fiends tea. So next we're with a bunch of the ladies and they're having a beach day. We see Nicole discussing her family issues and how much she hates her dad. Gertie arrives and it seems like her and Alexia have less tension between them. Now hold up Gertie, as she's talking about Alexia's wedding party, she's talking about how I'm guessing it was tacky that the bar had a little tipping jar. I mean, I get that the staff is already prepaid, but that happens at a lot of high tier events where, you know, guests still want to tip the bar, you know, whether it's like a dollar, five dollars. Hell, like at an event I just did a couple weeks ago, someone took me $20 just for bringing them a drink and it's open bar. I get that a cash bar is tacky, but just tipping people extra for their service, I don't think that's tacky. Now, I like you, Gertie, but you tried it. So Adriana arrives and she's telling all the ladies how she went from her number one guy to her number two guy. Number one wasn't acting right because he was an asshole around the reunion time. They're then grilling her about guy number two, asking is he single? And she's like, I think he is. Girl, what? Isn't that the first thing you try to find out if a guy is single? <laughs> like you're not sure? So then with that, Alexia lets her know in front of all the women that this guy is allegedly married with kids. Now, Alexia says she's just telling her this out of concern, but it's coming off a little messy. And it looks like Adriana isn't receiving it as concern. She says in her confessional that, you know, Alexia, she found the man of her dreams. Why is she in my business? 
is. So everyone is at this beach date except for Marisol, who I'm surprised isn't there, and Lisa and Larsa, who I think both were purposely not invited so they can have a drama-free beach day. But now the ladies are talking about their feud that I thought was over. So we get into the mortgage debate and everyone's just wondering like, why do you care? Again, a mortgage at least means that you own your house and you're not renting. But then they get into the topic of, does Lisa even know this information? Because normally, like, the housewives that are, like, taken care of by the really rich guy, they don't know that information. Probably only Lenny does. And there's a lot of foreshadowing in this scene. Because if someone says, is Lisa's name even on the deed? Because if not, if anything bad happens, then that's Lenny's house. So next scene, we're with Alexia. and She's having lunch with her spoiled son. They're having a conversation about her approval of the girl he's seeing that he had the incident with. He then kind of tells his mom in like a nice way that she should stay out of his relationship. Now, he says all this, but if something happens to him, then he's going to be calling for his mommy to bail him out. So next scene, we're with the fake happy couple, Lisa and Lenny. And again, they're going to end the episode on a scene between the two of them. I gotta say, that mansion is something. It is really nice. I wonder if she still lives in it. So Lisa's setting up a private romantic dinner for her and Lenny. It's curated by a private chef. They're having it in their beautiful backyard that's overlooking the Miami water. Now, the scene is awkward already just from Lenny's body language alone. Fun side note, I was watching this episode. My mom came in the room and started watching. And the first thing she asked me is, why do you look like he can't stand her? My mom doesn't watch Housewives. She didn't even know what franchise this is. So I just thought it was funny that anybody can tell tell that this man is not interested in her. So I'm just curious as to how she didn't see this. Like, was she just like turning a blind eye to all of this? Anyway, she's talking to him about her fight with Larsa. Then she brings up Larsa's divorce and she says, I can't imagine ever going through that. More foreshadowing. And Lenny's just sitting across from her knowing that he's cheating on her as she tells him this. Now that's an asshole. They're then talking about the alleged mortgage that they have and I don't even want to get into that. But he does say something about Larsa not knowing what a home equity line of credit is. So then everything's kind of going fine, but then the dinner's interrupted by one of their staff and she tells him that the nanny was in the shower and she slipped and fell and broke her arm. So now Lisa and Lenny is having a debate on whether to call 911 or just put the nanny in an Uber. Lenny is being very aggressive and annoyed with Lisa, who's just really concerned. The dinner is basically ruined at this point. We see Lisa asking the staff, I should call 911, right? You will call 911. Lenny comes back in and says, do not call 911. Do you understand me? Like you're abusing the system. Is it that deep, Lenny? I mean, she's really just concerned. She is kind of making a big deal out of it, but you know, her nanny broke her arm. So it's still serious. Like, was he being cheap or something? He was just being really mean to her about it. Anyway, it looks like Lenny has the final say and they put the nanny in the car to the hospital and that is where the episode ends. Now, even though Lenny had a point like, uh, oh, maybe an ambulance isn't necessary for, you know, sprained wrist or a broken arm. Now, even though Lenny had a point that calling 911 probably wasn't necessary, like it's just a broken arm, he didn't have to be an absolute asshole to Lisa about it. Like, he was being very aggressive and just making the situation very uncomfortable for everybody, including the staff. Like, he could have handled it way differently. I hope he knows he's become the villain of the franchise and he's going to get it from the fans every week. Anyway, I enjoyed this episode. Let's get into episode four. So we open with the montage of what all the ladies are doing. And I love how this franchise is shot on Peacock. Like, it's so, so glossy. We then find out that there's two events happening this episode. The first is with Larsa, who's having a birthday party for her dog on the beach. And then the second one is by Lisa, who's having a good vibes party at her big ass mansion. So first we're with Julia and Martina at their house. Now this is the new house they moved into. It was built by Martina. Um, this is what she wanted. Um, it's nice, but the decor left to be desired. Julia says she could have stayed on the farm. So they're having breakfast right now, and it seems like their marriage is heading the same direction as Lisa and Lenny's. 
Y'all notice how Martina be looking miserable all the time? I'm not sure if it's Julia or something else, but we rarely see her smile on this show. Speaking of that, Julia tells Martina that she's bored in this new house. I mean, the kids are out, she misses her animals, but she tells Martina that she's in this house because she loves her. The empty nest situation is clearly getting to her, but I'm like, girl, get it together or you're gonna lose your marriage. Wow, she even tells Martina, don't ask me for dinner for two anymore. She got some fucking nerve. I'm on Martina's side. I am curious to hear whose side y'all are on. So next scene is the day of Lars's event, the birthday party for the dog. She invites all the ladies as well as their dogs. And here come Julia bringing her baby goat, which is just so Julia. <laughs> What's also funny is we see the baby goat headbutt one of the dogs. So as the ladies are arriving, Larsa's being Larsa and making it a moment about selling something. Alexia points this out and says, geez, every event she has, like she's trying to sell us something or tell us about her business. Production has the receipts and every event she talks about, oh, this is my new thing. This is my new thing. Oh, you should try this. My jewelry line. She thinks it's tacky, and I agree. Later on, Adriana arrives, and then we see her tell Larsa that she's interested in getting a BBL and wants her blessing. When she says this, it's like a record scratched amongst the group. I mean, one, she gave Larsa such a hard time last season about her ass being so big and fake. And two, I think according to Larsa, I don't think she ever admitted to getting work done on her ass, even though it's clearly obvious that she had something done. I just think this is Adriana being messy and chaotic like she always is. Ha <laughs> ha! We then cut to Alexia's confession. She says, girl, you better do something with them legs before you get a BBL because you're going to be looking crazy. And she's right. I mean, y'all saw how Kim Kardashian used to be looking. It looked like um, when you put two big ass meatballs on popsicle sticks or it looked like an ant booty. Adriana crazy ass even asked Larsa to come with her to the BBL appointment. After hearing this, Larsa just calls her a hypocrite because after all this time she was ridiculing her about her ass, now she's the one that wants to ask like her. So Lisa arrives and we hear Larsa say how she wants to get to a better place with her, but then she asks her in front of everybody, are those new teeth? <laughs> I don't think that's the etiquette to ask somebody, are their teeth done? So then they both go to the side to talk privately, and they still talking about this whole building mortgage debate? I thought they were over that. So then for the second time, they apologize to each other, and I hope for the love of God, I hope it's the last time. Next scene, we're with Nicole, her mom, and her son at the park. Now, I love Nicole, but her family drama is just so uninteresting. I just want to see her and her fiance do rich shit and her getting married. So the drama with her dad continues, and it looks like her mom is the middleman. She acknowledges that a lot of people have been telling her to just let it go or to compromise. I mean, I'm all for protecting your peace, and I think Nicole's feelings are valid. Her mom tells her that at the end of the day, that's still your dad. And she says that he's a selfish idiot. <laughs> Damn. Next scene is the day of Lisa's Good Vibes party. We see all the ladies getting ready for it. Wow, Lisa definitely has like a full staff at that mansion. And here we go with another awkward scene between her and her husband. As she's trying to take a picture with him, she says, Oh, put your hands around me like you love me. <laughs> Again, I, I just don't understand how she was blindsided. We see the ladies arriving and ooh. Adriana, she better get it. Come on legs, come on heels. She looks good. Child, and then we see Nicole and her fiance show up on the boat. <laughs> Luxury. Now that's what I want to see from you, Nicole. We see Lisa bragging about how Lenny's getting more fit, but what she don't know is Lenny's trying to get fit for somebody else. So then we're with Adriana, and she's updating the ladies that she still doesn't know whether the man that she's talking to is married with three kids or not. One of those reasons is she says his mom's funeral is today, and she didn't think it was an appropriate time to ask him. Well, you need to ask him fast, or maybe you just don't mind being the mistress. But she does ask Lexi in this moment, who told her that? Adriana says, it was Marisol, huh? I know it's Marisol. And Alexia don't lie. She said, yeah, Marisol told me. I don't lie. I'll give her that. At least she admitted it. But now it looks like they were gossiping about her behind her back. Also, Marisol is cool with Adriana, so how come she didn't tell her that? 
I thought Marisol was cool with Adriana, so I'm wondering why she didn't just tell her in the first place instead of hearing it from Alexia. I'm sure there's gonna be some drama later. Alexia's trying to clean it up now and says the reason why they didn't tell her immediately because they didn't know if she was with the guy or not. They thought she was still with guy number one. I gotta give it to Alexia. That was a good lie she just came up with off the top of her head. Agent does point out in her confessional that it does seem like Marisol knows everybody's business. She thinks it's because she got a lot of time on her hands. I will say though, Marisol does get a little glee out of knowing people's dirt. Like last season, she tried that with Nicole saying, oh, I've heard about you. So the party continues, and I will say this is a very cute event. So then we see all the ladies together talking, and Lisa lets them know that she had to put down her dog recently. In the flashback, we see her and Lenny with the dog, and Lenny is expressing some emotion for once. And it looks like he cares more about that dog than Lisa. Like, that is the most genuine emotion I've seen from this man since I started watching the franchise. Anywho, Lisa lets all the ladies know that she's invited them to a girl's trip to the Keys. You know, we love a girl's trip. So next we have Julia talking to Nicole away from the other ladies about some issues she's going through in her marriage. She's saying that Martina told her that she's unkind and not affectionate. Well, you did tell her in the beginning of the episode not to ask you for any dinners for two anymore, so I can understand that. So Adriana joins the conversation, and I agree with Nicole. I think she's taking Martina for granted, and she's really going to feel that empty nest syndrome when the girls and her are out the house, and it's just her by herself at her farm. And that's if she owns the farm because she don't own the house. I'm sorry, but I honestly think this is all Julia's fault. She needs to get over it, maybe hire a counselor or uh, get a therapist for the both of them. Like actually try and like compromise with Martina. And okay, Adriana for that plan analogy. I actually use that a lot to talk about relationships. Like I compare them to plants. Like if you don't water them, they will die. If you don't water a relationship or take care of it, they will die. So now Julia's getting emotional, she starts crying, and Lisa enters the conversation. She tries to cheer her up, and they're on the topic about marriage, and Lisa's giving her experience. She says the grass isn't always greener on the other side, and she says that Lenny's mom says, you know, in this family, we don't divorce. And I'm sure while watching this, she regrets saying that. Meanwhile, with Lenny talking to his friend in the house about his dog having to be put down, after the cameraman leaves and they continue their conversation, and child, we got one of the biggest hot mic moments in Bravo history. His friend tells him that he's officially single, and then Lenny says, in a couple of months, I might be single too. And he says this in such like a, a cavalier, bragging type of way. He says they have their issues and he goes out and do whatever he wants while she's at home. His friend actually says that he don't want to see that happen. And Lenny, without missing a beat, says, well, I do. His friend then asks him, is he still sleeping with Lisa? And Lenny says no, because then he'd be cheating on the person that he really likes. And there it is. We got the admission of adultery. Lisa, if I was you, I would take this to divorce court and run his pockets. Run his pockets. Like, what a scumbag. His friend is now shocked hearing this and says, dude, like, are you mic'd? Lenny knows that he's mic'd. He's like, yeah, that's why I'm whispering. The fuck? That just goes to show just because you rich as fuck do not mean that you are smart. I'm really curious to know that he intentionally want the show to hear this or was this just a mistake on his part for being dumb as fuck? I don't know. After that, that is where the episode ends, y'all. Look, I am in for this season. Like, they are giving me Beverly Hills, but like, you know, in Miami. I I'm loving this so far. I actually just watched episode five today, so I will get to that as soon as possible. Y'all let me know what y'all think about these two episodes in the comments, because the girls are bringing it. I, I will say they are bringing it. I am entertained. I feel bad for Lisa, but I am entertained as hell hell by this. With that, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see y'all for the next episode. Bye!